Hello trumpet players, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about how to do a lip bend. It's funny, you know, I did already a l video and I called it how to do lip bends. And someone left a comment for me and said, great, now I know why they're, what a lip bend is, why they're so important, but how do you do them? And I went back to the video and I'm checking it and thinking, oh, this person is right. I never actually in detail explain how to do lip bend. So now that was a year and a half ago when I made that video and the process I'm doing for the videos now, I call these my feature videos. Okay, these are the main videos uh, that where I'm talking about trumpet stuff and it's, so the other kind of videos I do are my promo videos like with the the promotions for my compositions and my arrangements promotions for my books and then I do the question answer sessions and I also do the behind the wheel videos but these videos are the main that's why I'm calling them feature videos and I changed the process that I'm doing for this and um, it's just a better process and those kind of mistakes aren't going to happen as often. But I do apologize if you've been to that other video and you can link to it here. Um, uh, obviously, I dropped the ball there. Um, so I renamed that video to just lip bends or trumpet lip bends or something like that. And now we will talk, we will talk about how to do <laughs> lip bends. All right, let's, let's take a look at this. Um, I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you already know what a lip bend is. If you don't, go to this link. Um, so, and I'm also assuming that if you're watching this video, it's because you don't know how to do it. And the first thing we want to do is go with what's easiest and progress to what's more difficult, right? So let's start with low C. All right, we're going to do C, B, C. For now, all we're going to do is play it and get it in our ears. Now what we're going to do is do the exact same thing, but on the mouthpiece. So we want to do that until that feels comfortable. Maybe one time is, is enough for you. But if you're re really concerned about doing the lip bends well, maybe two or three times. Okay, now, when you're comfortable with that, when you can buzz exactly those pitches, C, B, C, you're ready to try to bend it on the trumpet. And what we're doing is that same exact frequency, do, 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 but on open fingering. Okay, now if, if you went through this process where you played the notes normal first, then you buzzed them on the mouthpiece, and then you tried to do it with the bend, and by the way, that's what we mean by bend, is when you don't change the fingering, but you bend it down a half step, 
They're basically playing it out of tune. Um, if you can't do that, if you tried and it still wouldn't bend down, and the reason why we're doing C is just because the low notes are easier, okay? Um, if you can't, then you do the whole process again. Play the note. Buzz the note. Then go back and try to bend it again. It should, the bending should feel almost exactly like doing it on the mouthpiece. The only difference in the feel is that the horn kind of fights you a little bit. And you have to like, don't let it push you around. Okay, don't let the horn push you around. Put the note where you want it. Make the note go where you want it, just like you do on the mouthpiece. This is the crucial part, right? Doing it on the mouthpiece because the horn's not there to, to boss you around. Now go back to the horn, try to do it without fingering. When you can do that and do it confidently, then I suggest that you continue up the scale like this. Next note, take it off your lips, by the way, between the exercises, let the blood flow through there. Now, as you go higher, it gets just a tiny bit more difficult to do the bend. All right? If you get to a note, that's giving you a little bit more trouble than the other notes. Kind of camp out on that note a while. Do it three, four, or five times to get used to it and get that bend really going. Then after that, continue up the scale. Take the horn off your lips. Go on to the next note. Take the horn off your lips, go up to the next note. Take the horn off your lips, go up to the next note. We got three more left. Like I said, as you go higher, it's a little bit more difficult. One thing to mention at this point is that we want the notes to be as steady as possible. Hold the steady pitch. When you go to the, the bent note, hold that like a steady note. And you know what? One of those things, we say that the, the lip buns, bends help you with your sound. One of the components of a good sound is a steady pitch. If you have a beautiful core tone, but an unsteady pitch, you might have what, what would be considered a pure, beautiful sound, a beautiful tone, but a bad sound. You have to be able to hold the pitch steady. That's a very important skill if you want to be a, a good trumpet player. Now the last note.
Now, I have already talked in the other video about why we do this. I've talked about the benefits. And now, the only thing that might be important to mention here uh, in the context of how to do lip bones, uh, lip bends, sorry about that. Um, I like to do the lip bends in the context of the long tones. So, for example, if you're doing the famous Chickwitz exercise, I don't finger the, the, the second note, I bend the second note. I do that exercise almost like it's a stamp exercise. I won't go into what that means right now. Those of you who are familiar with stamp will know what I'm talking about. Uh, but yes, that's when I like to do it. And now, my long tones in my books, the, the newer books from Chops Express forward, are all inspired, influenced by the Chickawit studies. But my version of the studies where we do a bend. So you'll notice that almost anything past the Tyro level, I don't do it on the Pioneer level, I don't do it on the Tyro level, but from the player level up, we always have lip bends in the long tones. Because I do believe that they're very important. The only reason I don't put them on the low ones, the low levels, is because supposedly those kids don't know how to do that yet. So, um, to tell you the truth, when I'm doing those lower level books, I will add, add bends because I actually do all seven levels of routine depending on what my needs are for that week or for that day or whatever. So yes, that's the time when I think it's best to do the lip bends is during your long tones. You don't have to be doing my system to use the lip bends that way. You can just simply add the, the bends to the long tones you're doing already. All right. Okay. If you have any more questions, <laughs> like, like the person who asked this question. Now, I went back to answer, and I didn't see the question anymore. Apparently, it was removed or something. Or that person maybe found another place to ask. Um, or maybe I just took too long, and this is a busy season for me. Um, but that the question was gone, um, but I'm glad they asked because it, I wouldn't have realized that the information was missing out of that other video, right? So, and that's what makes this channel work, in my opinion, when I get feedback from you guys, about and, and again in the form of questions that's fine how do you do this how do you do that what do i think about this what do i think about that um that's what helps me figure out what it is i should be making videos for okay so i appreciate when you do have questions i can't always be this quick though and to tell you the truth the only reason i'm making this video right now is because i it's it's like one of the shortest, easiest videos on my list. <laughs> so, because I told you, I'm doing these um, more organized version of these videos now. Anyway, um, oh, they'll have one more point to make before I sign off. There are some people who will tell you stuff, scientific stuff. I call it quasi-scientific stuff, right? Because it really isn't true science. Okay, it's more like opinion, informed opinions. Uh, but they have uh, people, well, there are people out there who will tell you how this works and you have to do this with your aperture and do this and do that. And it's just not consistent from one person to the next. And, and I think the, the, the assumption that people make in the trumpet community is that if you have two great players that, that play like world class, that they must be playing the same way. 
like physically, what they're doing physically must be the same. And it's a false assumption. Different players di play physically different ways. And I can't go into, it would take a whole other video to talk about that right now. I won't go into that right now. But um, there are reasons why this is true. So the way, the, the me mechanisms that one person uses to bend the notes may actually very well be different from the mechanisms, physical mechanisms that somebody else uses. So that's why I don't use that kind of language. So you might find, and I haven't looked personally, but I've heard people talk this way before. You might find somewhere else on YouTube where they talk about what to do physically to get those notes. And all I'm telling you is just to try to bend the note down. Okay? I'm leaving it that vague on purpose. Because really, when you get down to it, it doesn't matter how. That skill of bending the note down is a skill that is kind of... Oh, what was the word for that? You know, it, it flighting. It's not something you can pin down for yourself. No matter how much you, quote unquote, learn about the science, you still have to find for yourself the mechanism that works for you. I, absolutely, I actually know a person who told me one time, very good trumpet player in town, who told me how he gets the bend, the bend out. And I'm like, that is just bizarre. And he did the bend for me. I don't hear any difference between the way he's doing it and the way I'm doing it. But according to what he's saying and what I'm thinking, we get the bend two entirely different ways. So be careful about that. Just because something is scientific, and I don't, I don't dispute the science. The science is actually correct. It's just sometimes very limited. Um, it's just sometimes very limited. It's, it's the kind of science that doesn't take into account other variables. Okay? So, with that said, um, God bless you guys. I hope you got a lot out of this video. If you're having trouble, you know, that's the way these videos are. You know, I could watch house repair videos all day, but I, if I don't need to, for example, replace a window, maybe it's nice to watch the video, maybe the guy cuts up or whatever, right? Maybe it's funny. Um, but I don't need that information right now. And if you don't have a problem with bends, then this video isn't relevant, right? So that's how these videos are. Someone's looking for answers, I'm trying to give you the answer. This is not for every single trumpet player that's out there. This is for the trumpet players who haven't figured out how to do a bend yet. Right? I mean, that only makes sense. Okay? So anyway, thank you very much for hanging out with me. And we'll see you on the next video.